All right, everyone, this is the Comic Artist Badge, and our guest speaker today is Brett Iwin. All right, here we go. Hi, Brett. Okay, hi, everyone. Uh, sorry you all had to see, watch me sitting here doing awkward email things while you were logging in. But you're all so patient. Um, I'm excited to join you guys tonight and talk to you about uh, this Comic Artist Badge. Um, my name is Brett, and I've heard that some of you may have already heard about the Mickey Mouse thing. Is that true? You guys hear that I have a friend, Mickey? Yeah. So I, other than being an artist, I am also the voice of Mickey Mouse. So hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, but before I ever became a voice actor and started voicing Mickey Mouse, I was an artist. I went to school for art. Um, illustration specifically, and I got my start as a professional artist working for a greeting card company you may have heard of called Hallmark. I don't know if anyone buys Hallmark cards anymore, but <laughs> that's where I got my start. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about this comic artist badge because um, even though I haven't done, made a comic book myself professionally, um, there's a lot of things that go into comic books. Um, that I'm familiar with, which are storytelling and, and, and telling a story through drawing. Um, and I'll even talk about how comics are very reminiscent or similar to the process we use for animation and doing cartoons, which is called storyboarding. So um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Um, so I guess to get us started, um, it's important to think of what kind of story you want to tell this evening or whenever you're doing a comic book. But uh, for our purpose, think of a, a quick story, a short story, uh, maybe something that happened to you today or this week, something that happened with a pet, or it could be something that you just wanna make up completely and that's fine too. Maybe you have a, a fun little character that you like to draw and you wanna tell a simple story about that. So we're gonna draw it out um, and we're gonna focus on doing it in four panels tonight to keep things easy. Uh, but just know that you could expand upon it and you can make your story as many panels as you want. Um, and we'll get to exactly what a, a panel is um, in a minute. Um, and then once we have the story drawn out, we're going to add words. And I'll show you a couple ways in which you can add words to a comic uh, because a comic is really a visual story. Um, so it's like a book with pictures, but the words are integrated into the pictures, if that makes sense. Um, so this is just a sketch of Mickey Mouse that I had done. Like I said, I get to voice Mickey Mouse on TV and in the theme parks and all that fun stuff. Um, and you know, Mickey himself has been in quite a few comics. Um, besides the TV shows, there are a lot of publications where Mickey is seen in print in comic format. So even though I don't get to talk for him on the comics, um, they're still fun to, to see the different adventures that Mickey gets to go on in that. Um, so I think you all kind of got prepped ahead of time, but if you don't already, make sure you have paper or a sketchbook, something to draw on. Um, I think you guys can still see me, right? You can see, yeah. So, um, you know, or you can use, I have a bunch of three by five, or I guess these are bigger than that, four by six little index cards. You can use those. If you have post-its, you know, you can use those. That's kind of easy because you just peel off four of them and stick them in front of you. Um, or if you have a piece of paper, uh, we're going to, I'll show you how you can just draw a couple boxes on it. So just something to draw on to get you started. Um, a pencil and an eraser, or if you're confident and you want to just go for it with the pen, I'm going to be using a Sharpie because I want to be able, you guys to be able to see the drawings I'm doing. Um, on the camera, but um, basically use whatever you want. You want to use lipstick or a crayon or uh, I'm trying to think what else you could use. Um, a melted popsicle, that'll work too. So whatever you can think of to make a line on the paper basically. Um, and let's see what else. If you want to get really crazy and start coloring things in, something with color is good. So if you have some color pencils or whatnot, I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm going to focus just on doing line work. But if you guys have the time and you want to go into that, then let's do it. Um, and then if you are using a pencil, make sure you have a way to sharpen it. Um, and then also what might come in handy is a ruler. Because like I said, if, if you are going the route of the paper and you're going to be drawing boxes, it's nice to have a little straight edge to keep things um, going. Okay, 
So let's delve into the world of comics um, and visit with a comic artist. So I'm your comic artist for tonight. Um, and what is a comic artist? A comic artist is really anybody who draws, it basically a comic artist is an artist. Um, uh, specifically when it comes to comics, it's a storyteller who chooses to draw um, in, some time, in, a, in a sequential uh, process to tell a story. Um, and then let's see, fun fact about comic books. Comic books came about in 1934. It's a long time ago if you think about it, uh, but they've become really popular lately. And um, actually today's graphic novels uh, made their day, they have the format of graphic novels kind of made their debut in 1978 and it's one of the fastest growing literary medium in the country. So that's kind of crazy to think about, you know, we're all familiar with books, but the popularity of these graphic novels, which are really, you know, a lot, you know, people think of comics maybe as something you see in the newspaper or uh, maybe Spider-Man or superhero stuff, but graphic novels are really kind of, um, have become so popular because they're a little bit more um, weighted storytelling. Uh, they're really like intense novels that have the imagery to go along with it. And with that comes a whole bunch of different um, art styles and it's kind of fun to see the different fantasy worlds that uh, are being explored in those novels. Okay, so we're gonna get started by choosing the story that you want to tell tonight. And like I mentioned earlier, it can be something that happened to you today. Maybe you saw something on TV. Maybe you, maybe your sibling did something funny. Um, maybe you went on a, a trip to the grocery store recently and, and you know, something happened there. So it can really be anything. It can also be completely up to your imagination. Um, you know, I hadn't really thought of what my story is going to be, going to be today. But I'm trying to think, today I painted uh, my garage and I got on a ladder. And thankfully, I didn't fall off the ladder. I didn't spill paint anywhere. But when I was up there, I was thinking about all the things that could go wrong. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll tell a story about painting my garage with the ladder slipping and the paint going everywhere. And instead of painting the garage, I painted my driveway. It's not the funniest, but it'll help us tell a story. Um, nobody said they have to be funny. They can be serious too. If you wanna make it very serious, you can make it serious. It's totally up to you. Okay, so everyone have a story in mind? Just think about it, no pressure. You don't have to do it right away. Um, but the next step after we have our story in mind is that we're going to draw it out. So um, a good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, the middle usually is some kind of conflict, and that doesn't always necessarily, necessarily mean something bad or evil, but something that the character kind of has to get over or fix, uh, problem solve. So you, you start with um, the presenting the, the, the character and presenting the problem, and then there's the problem, and then you have to fix it. So those are kind of our beats that we're going to be addressing. Um, so does your story, your, char your story have a character? And if so, what's your character look like? Does it have more than one character? That's okay too. Um, and for the purpose of this afternoon or this evening, uh, don't feel like you have to do some fully rendered, shaded, realistic drawing. It could be a stick figure. So remember, the point of our drawings tonight are just to tell a story. And you could tell a story with a simple line. Um, for example, you know, let's say you wanted to tell a story of a real kind of a boring day. My day was boring, but you could only make one line. How would you do that? I'm going to say, oh, boring. So, so this is kind of a boring line to me. All right. Now let's say the day was boring and then all of a sudden something really fun happened and I couldn't believe it. Well, maybe my line starts to look like that, okay? Or maybe, maybe I, my day started out and then I fell in love and I was just all kinds of giddy and loopy and I was so happy because my puppy wouldn't stop licking me. Well, maybe that's what the line looks like, kind of flowy and silly. So there's a lot of ways you can tell a story and it doesn't have to be drawing out something. You don't have to be Pablo Picasso or Rembrandt. It can be a simple stick figure in a line. You could even just do a smiley face. Um, you know, everyone's familiar with smiley faces and we all know how expressive those can be. 
He's happy. He's sad. Now this guy. He's usually happy all the time. Okay, so you guys have in mind who your characters are gonna be? Then the next thing is we're gonna do a free draw, uh, which is you just need to grab a stack of paper and we're just gonna keep drawing and drawing and drawing. And we're gonna draw really quickly at first and then uh, it's, it's sketching basically. So we're gonna, you know, when I'm sketching, and I'm sorry I can't show you at the process. Let me see if I can do this. Now I'll use Mickey as an example because he seems to be a running theme of tonight when it comes to me. But uh, when we say free draw or when, when I'm in, when I talk about sketching, uh, you know, sometimes people will do a drawing and they'll start and they'll just be really rigid and they'll say, I'm gonna draw Mickey Mouse. And so, okay, he has a head like this and then he has an ear and another ear and it comes down and he's got a smile and he's got a nose. And then you know, his smile comes like this. And you see I'm making one line and I'm trying really hard to make it as perfect as possible because I only got one shot essentially. So that's Mickey, but he's a little stiff. He's a little rigid. Now, if I was gonna do a free draw or a sketch technique, what I would do is I would, I would start out really loose. I'm just gonna kind of let my, my marker, your pencil or whatever it is, just kind of kiss the paper. It doesn't have to be really strong. So I'm just gonna start with a circle. And that's a good shape to start with a lot of characters, just so you know. Um, and then I'm gonna draw, start with a different circle for where his nose would be and then kind of get an idea of where his smile line comes up and his mouth comes down here. And you see I'm staying real loose. You see the difference as compared to before? It's real loose and there's a lot of lines. And don't let a lot of lines scare you. Like it's okay to be a little messy in this style of drawing. Okay, and now that I've got all these loose lines, you can see it's still Mickey, but now you have the chance to go back and do what I did the first time, which is just kind of select the lines that you really liked, that were really good, and you can darken those lines. And you'll see what happens is your eye starts to look past the mess of scratches, and it really focuses on those lines that you call out. So this is a really helpful drawing technique because sometimes you might not know exactly how you want to draw your character. You might need to explore a little bit and you know try to find that pose. And so when you're sketching, that gives you the freedom to kind of explore a little bit. So this is the time when we get to explore. So I'm going to, let's see. My story is about me painting a roof or painting my garage, excuse me. So I need to figure out what my character looks like. Well, my character's me. So let's see, I, I have a bald head if you couldn't tell. This big shiny noggin. So I'm gonna give myself a round head. When my face comes down, I got kind of a square chin. My ears stick out a little bit on the side. All right. My nose is a little pointy. I was happy that to be painting my garage today, so I'm gonna make sure I was smiling. Get myself some eyebrows, because I don't have hair, so I need eyebrows to, to let people know where my top of my head starts. And then I have my eyes here. Let's see, I was wearing a t-shirt, so I'm just gonna give myself a simple t-shirt. And then, of course, if you're painting, you need a paintbrush. So, I think this will be my character for the story that I'm gonna tell today. 
It's not crazy. It's pretty simple and it's a little messy, but that's okay. All right, does everyone, has everyone had enough time to explore your characters or do we need some more time? You can just do, do this if you need more time and I'll slow down. What you should know about me is I'm, I've always said I'm an impatient artist. I like to get things done. I'm so excited to see the final result, but I don't take a lot of time. Um, some people like to sit and noodle and do every little stroke and, and uh, that type of artwork usually comes out and it looks so real that they call it photo real because it looks like you might as well have taken a picture. And there's a lot of really talented artists who do that. I'm not that way. My style is messy and expressive and quick. Okay. So it's time for us to put those characters on the page. So what that means is that we're gonna frame them. So we're gonna draw little boxes and those boxes, like I mentioned before, are called panels. So as I showed you earlier, let's see if I can find it. These are my panels. So like I said, you could, if you have sticky notes, that's fine. Or you could use, you know, three by five or four by six index cards you may have had. Um, or all you could have to do is use a, a straight edge and draw four panels or four rectangles or four squares. This, this, the size and shape doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But we're going to focus on four of them today. All right. And then keep in mind with your characters, we're going to try and use facial expressions and body posture. So the way the body is positioned to illustrate the movements and the emotion of our story. Um, you know, so maybe just keep in mind that sometimes the way a character bends or the way a character's, you know, like I showed you with the smiley faces earlier, if, it, if a character has a frown or a smile, that's going to tell us a lot for our story. It's going to make the story that much more dynamic. Um, so keep that in mind when you're drawing. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, I've talked a little bit about different styles of art and artists will switch between styles because a style itself can do a lot to, to tell a story. So you could have a style that's real rigid, kind of going back to our line example here. You know, these are different styles of line. And we talked about how the different type of line tells a different story. So keep that in mind in terms of style artistically as well. You know, if you are doing something that's really just black and white, that tells you a different emotion than a, than a drawing that's in full color. You know, black and white might indicate really dramatic or epic, um, while, while a full color drawing might say to you, oh, it's a little happier, it's bouncier, it's more positive. So keep those things in mind when you're drawing your panels, um, because like I said, a lot of artists switch between. Um, all right, let's see, what else do we have on here? One panel might show a ball falling on a girl's head and the next panel might show a close-up of her face as she reacts. Um, so that's just another you know, example that each panel, think of each panel kind of like, oh, this is not panels, those are lines. Think of each panel <clears throat> as um, almost like a, the TV screen. And when you're watching a show, if you've ever paid attention, you know, some, the camera doesn't just stay static like it is now on these Zoom meetings. You know, the camera's here. I can move in the frame, but the camera doesn't move. Now think of a TV show. Sometimes it'll be really close to someone's face or it might be really far away and show multiple characters. Usually when it goes close to someone's face, it's showing us that they're, they're crying or they're scared. Um, so keep those in mind when you're drawing your panels as well, because the way that you frame, the way that you crop is another word for that, um, will really help move this, the story along. Um, okay, I went, oops, went too far. Let me get back here. So is everyone ready to move on with your, your panels? Hopefully we've got the panels. I've got my four squares. Um, so I would say, like I mentioned before, the beats of a story usually get an intro, conflict, and then a resolution. Okay, so I know we have four here, uh, four panels. So you can decide, maybe your intro is going to take up two of those panels and your conflicts one and your resolutions is the fourth one. Maybe your conflicts, a really big conflict, and it's going to take up two panels. Again, and when I say the word conflict, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a bad thing. Um, you know, 
the conflict of a story could be, I was feeding my dogs and my dogs ate so fast that they uh, knocked over the dog food container in the process. You know, not a bad, not a bad thing. It's not horrible, but it's something that I had to then fix because then I had to pick up the dog food. It's kind of a boring example, but, um, or you're getting soft serve ice cream out of a soft serve machine and you can't turn on, it, it just won't stop, it won't stop. And it kept filling more and more and more and more ice cream than you wanted until you finally give it all your might and you press that lever up and it finally stopped. Now, you know, more ice cream isn't necessarily a bad thing, but that's the con, there was a problem. So there was a conflict and a problem that needed to be solved. So that's, um, helps make for a more dynamic story. So, um, why don't we get started? Let's focus on those, the, the first couple of panels. And like I said, introduce your character. So um, I won't talk your ear off the whole time, but I'm gonna start drawing. And again, my story is about painting the garage. I just wrote a little title up top to remind myself what the story is about. Okay, so I'm gonna get drawing. And remember what I said about that loose drawing technique too. You don't always have to be so rigid. And another thing that's nice, maybe I'll show you an example of this, is if you have a pencil, the nice thing about pencil is sometimes it comes across, comes out a little lighter than, um, than a pen would. So I like to start drawing with pencil and then go back and kind of like I showed you with that sketch technique where you go back and highlight some lines, I like to go back with the pen and really then bring out the lines that I want to be my main lines after I've sketched with my pencil. So I'll show you an example here. I'm just drawing my garage and some trees and me. my paint. It was sunny today, so I'm going to draw myself with a hat because skin care is important. Okay, so what I did for my first panel, this is my intro panel. I decided to start drawing with pencil. You can see, so I drew a little bit looser than I might normally draw. I just kind of wanted to get in the idea. And so for this one, for the intro, I want to set up the story. I want to help convey what is this story about. So what I've done is I've drawn the whole garage and then you can see me. So you're looking at me from behind and you can see I've got a paint can in my hand and I'm staring at the garage. So my first scene is setting up the story saying, this is about painting my garage. Um, so how do you do that? You show a can of paint and you show the, the character looking at the garage. Now what I'm gonna do is go back, now that I've got that sketched in with pencil, and I'm just gonna give a more final line with the marker that I've had in here. Okay, so I took my marker and I just drew over that pencil drawing. Now you can see it's a little bit more um, solid of a line. And something we didn't talk about is shading or coloring, but at this point, once you've got that, you can make that decision. Do you want to shade some stuff to show maybe something is lighter or maybe further away? 
um, or do you want to use some color to do that? That's totally up to you. I'm going to use a little shading to show that these trees are behind everything. So I'm going to use a technique called hash marks. Hash marks are simply just lines that show that something's a little darker than the rest of it. All right. Okay, so I've got my intro and I'm going to move into the conflict of my story. So my conflict, I'm going to use panel two and panel three. And when you're doing them, typically you want to go like, oops, like how we read a book. You want to go from left to right. So I'm going to go one, two, then down to the bottom, three, four. That's how I'm going to do mine. I'll grab my pencil. Okay. So again, mine is called painting the garage. And so next, in order to paint the garage, I had to put the ladder up. So I'm going to draw myself. You know what? No, I'm not going to draw putting the ladder up. I'm going to show that I'm happy painting uh, the, lad the garage today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a close up of my face. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show that I was smiling. Paintbrush. Okay, so for my second one, you can see I chose to go close up on my character. And I'm showing that he's happy and he's painting. You can clearly see what he's doing. He's got the paintbrush in his hand. I drew some little drips coming off the paintbrush so that we know that paintbrush has paint on it. And what could go wrong? He's happy. So again, I'm going to take my marker and just go back and darken that up a bit. I'm going to use those hash marks I talked about earlier to show that there's a background behind my character, just to make the character stand out that much more. Another thing, and we haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to be adding words to the story. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to add words to the story. And one thing to keep in mind is you can either add the words below each panel or they can be a part of the panel. Um, and when they're a part of the panel, it's usually because your character is saying something or thinking something. And I'll show you two different ways to do that. But at this point, when you're drawing your panels, if your character is saying something, you might want to think about leaving some space. And I'll demonstrate that on my next one here because what's going to happen to my character is he's going to spill the paint. So I'm going to draw him up on the ladder.
Okay, so for my the next panel, my panel number three, I'm showing that I've, the character has spilled the paint. And in this one, I think he's gonna be saying something. So I left a little bit of room on each side, okay? And then fill up the whole thing like I did last time. So I'm gonna go back like I've done before and just darken a few of those lines. I have darkened the, that one. You can see he spilled his paint. All right, now I'm gonna move on to my last panel. And like I said, I know I'm going fast. So if it's taking you a little bit longer, that's okay. You can take as long as you want. Um, I just like to get, get it drawn on the paper really fast. And then sometimes I like to go back. And that's what I would say. If, you're, if you feel like you've gotten someplace, you're really excited about drawing, but you're not quite done yet, after we're all done, you can go back and you can noodle it and work on it some more. And you know maybe this is the, the start of something for you. All right, so I have to decide how I'm gonna finish this story in my last panel. And I think for me, even though I spilled the paint, he's gonna find out that it's not all that bad. So let's see, how is he gonna find out that it's not all that bad? So for my story, even though I dropped the paint, my character is very happy because he's realized that the paint hit the ground and made the shape of Mickey Mouse. So now on the driveway, he has a big Mickey stain, a big shape of Mickey on the stain. That's not a bad thing ever. It could have been worse. And again, I left a lot of room because in this one, he's gonna be saying some words. So I'll darken up that drawing. And then we'll talk about how you add words to your story or to your comic. Okay, oops. All right, so of course, we talked about this, but there are comics out there that have no words, and they're just a bunch of pictures. But for the most part, uh, the art of comics is a melding or melting or joining of art and words. Um, so the words and the pictures are meant to be experienced together. So we're gonna add um, words to your comic in one of these ways. So. When you want to add dialogue, so if the character is saying something, a common way of doing that is to draw a speech bubble that looks like this. Okay, so it's a big oval or a circle and it's got a little, little point um, pointing that would direct down to uh, your character's mouth, which would show that they're speaking. Um, so for me, I'm going to add that on my last panel, but let's go over the next way first. So if you want to use speaking is one way. Then the other way is if the character's thinking something, you can add what's called a thought bubble. Um, so instead of your character having to speak something, they can think it. And that's usually expressed by drawing kind of like bubbles coming from the top of their head. So it's, you know, we're thinking something, but not everybody can hear it. So there's that way. 
And then, like I mentioned before, if you just want to tell the story by describing the scene and not the character's not necessarily saying anything, uh, you can just write it underneath. So that's, you know, you can write a running third person narrative at the bottom of each panel. So that's, you're just basically describing what's happening in the story. Um, all of these things are used. And like I mentioned before, I do a lot of work on TV as Mickey. So I voice Mickey on TV shows. And I go into the studio and I record Mickey Mouse talking before it's, we ever see any animation or picture. But the one thing that we do sometimes get to see is what's called a storyboard. And a storyboard is essentially what we're making now. It's just like a comic. It's a series of drawings that tell the story. And so a lot of times the writers and director will use these same techniques. They'll either show a speech bubble or a thought bubble, or a lot of times they'll just write underneath each panel to say what's happening. Okay, oops. Excuse me, didn't mean to click that. So I'm gonna go back to my story and I'm just gonna look at it, you know, my panels and decide where I think those opportunities can go. And for my first panel, I'm just gonna set up the story and I'm just gonna write the narrative underneath. Um, So I just went ahead and wrote right underneath my drawing and started the story by saying, the day was perfect to paint. That's not the best English I've just realized, best grammar, but I think you get the idea. The day was perfect, was a perfect day to paint the garage. How about that? Hey, I'm talking about comics. I'm not talking about English, so. Okay, and then on my second panel, I'm not gonna, he doesn't necessarily have to say anything or think anything, I think, his, his expression kind of says it all. So I'm gonna leave that one as is. And then we're gonna come down to this third panel when he spills the paint. And I don't think he's gonna say anything, but he's definitely thinking something. So I'm gonna use a thought bubble on that one. So I just added a thought bubble. So those bubbles are coming out of his head and he's thinking, no! And this is, brings up a fun point too. When you're adding the words, the words can be different styles themselves. So you see in this one, I started the no by drawing the N a little smaller and then the longer he yells no, I added more O's. And I just made the O's a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. So it you know, kind of shows volume in a way. It expresses that his thoughts are getting louder or his dismay is getting stronger. Now I'm gonna move on to my fourth one and he's very excited. So I think in this one, he's gonna be saying something. So I'm gonna use a speech bubble in this one. So again, I drew a little oval and then you can see, I just have this little pointy thing kind of directing towards his mouth so that we know it's coming out of his mouth. And I think there's nothing better or more appropriate to say in this moment than, oh boy, because that's what Mickey would say. So you can see he's looking at the fact that this paint, I'm gonna color in my paint so you can tell it's paint. I'm gonna make it look a little shiny. Oh no, all this paint spilled. It looks like Mickey, so everything's okay. And he says, oh boy. Or as Mickey would say, oh boy. So if you wanna go back to my drawings again, we talked about the points of story. We intro it, we're saying it's a great day to paint. You can see the guy's walking up, my character's walking up to the garage, he's got paint in his hand, he's ready to tackle the day. And then he moves on to the next thing and he starts painting and boy, is he enjoying himself. So much fun. But then, no, he spills the paint off the ladder. Now there's the conflict, how are we gonna resolve it? He gets off the ladder and discovers that the paint actually painted Mickey Mouse on his driveway and since he's such a big, Disney fan, he is excited about that. He says, oh boy. So that's my story.
pretty simple. I didn't spend a lot of time making my drawings. You know, my, my characters as simple as possible. Sometimes simple is better to tell a story, but like we mentioned, graphic novels are also a, a different art form where it's really detailed and, and beautiful paintings. And so you can kind of go well, all over the place. The sky is the limit when it comes to style and how much time you want to spend with this. But the main point of any comic is to tell the story. And so you have a plethora of options in terms of how it's going to look. But as long as you keep in mind the tools of one telling the story by dividing it into the panels. And again, we used four, but your story could take 10 panels. It could take 20 panels. It could take as many as you want. Your story could be a lot more complicated than a guy spilling paint. Um, but hopefully this shows you the different tools of how to split up the story with an intro, a conflict and a resolution. And then also the different ways of communicating what's happening in the story by either writing it down in third person, showing the narrative underneath the panel, or if your character is talking, by using either a speech bubble or a thought bubble. And a fun thing to even explore is maybe the next time you go around, if your story doesn't have multiple characters, maybe explore doing one with one or two, or you know, two characters or three characters, because then you can start showing how those characters are talking to each other. So for sake of example, I'm just gonna show you, let's see, we have three, three characters. I'll draw myself here. And then I'm going to show I have my friend here who is just laughing at the idea of me spilling my paint. So here's an example of two characters. You got, well, this, <laughs> me or this character here. And I'm gonna have him telling the story of what happened. And then this is the friend reacting. So you see, I've given them both two speech bubbles. So in this one, he's gonna say, I spilled the paint. And then the friend who's laughing is just gonna say, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. So now we're showing a story between two characters. You can consider this screen one panel. So that's how you would do that. Or similarly, you could have one person saying something. Maybe instead of the guy laughing, my first character says, I spilled the paint. And then the other guy, maybe this was a thought bubble. So let me X that out. Maybe. Pretend that's not there. And instead he had a thought bubble. So pretend that this guy is not here. And instead he's thinking, I can't believe it. So sometimes you can combine them. They don't always have to be talking to each other. One can be speaking, one can be thinking. Let's see. So that's basically the art of comic books. You guys still working on yours or? I hope yours look better than mine. I don't have colored pencils next to me, otherwise I'd start coloring them in. Oh, and all I should mention, the most important thing is on any piece of artwork, when you're all done, you have to add your name to it. So make sure you sign your artwork. I signed mine down there at the bottom right hand corner. And if you haven't already, you can add a title to your story, to your comic. So there you go. The art of comics. I think I covered it. <laughs> See, uh, we'll just, for fun, we'll go back through this. How about that? We'll start at the beginning again. 
So we, we dealt, we went into the world of comics and we thought about our story. We started, started about, we talked about drawing it out and the different ways you can draw it out and that technique of sketching to kind of get you started and loosen up your drawing. Then we talked about framing it into the four panels and how we established our story. There's our four panels. Then we talked about adding the words, telling the word the story with words and the different ways of doing that with a speech bubble or a thought bubble or writing underneath the narrative description. So there you go. That's that. Well, thank you, Brett. I'm going to stop the video.